Hey guys, today I wanted to do a video on something that I'm very passionate about and that is going to college as an adult student and this is for anybody who after high school uh, either went right into a job or went into the military or you got married uh, had kids uh, or maybe even you never finished high school at all and it's a little bit later in life and for whatever the reason you never went to college and you're at a point in your life right now where you want to explore that avenue and, and continue your education and I'm all for that I was one of those people uh, this is something that um, that has a lot of factors to consider um, but either way I'm still very uh, much for people continuing their education and, and uh, if they want to, and if there's one thing that should not deter you, that is your age. Because, especially nowadays, um, there are more adult students uh, than ever before, and in certain cases, outnumber uh, traditional age students. Here are some of the factors to consider. Um, the first factor, in my mind, is actually time. Because that's something that if you don't have it, really will make it difficult. Um, uh, money is something I'll get to next, uh, but pretty much if, if you don't really have a whole lot of time in your schedule, that's going to make going back to school a little bit difficult, regardless of whether or not you choose uh, an online program or you go to class in person. So, uh, with that said, there are programs that are better designed for people with, with tough time commitments um, and those are something some things to look at and look for they are out there uh, but just keep that in mind uh, maybe it's something that if you um, are looking down the road uh, you know right now it's the summer um, so uh, fall programs will be starting to uh, accept enrollment for for adult programs um, usually all the way up until classes start they don't usually hold the same requirements uh, as far as registration goes for adult students as they do for traditional age students who would have registered already for the fall by now. So think about the time issue. The next issue is of course money because um, it can and will be one of the biggest financial investments you make. Uh, but I would look at it as an investment. Um, but it, it, it does cost a, a lot of money, uh, more so than uh, I ever wish it would have, but um, that's just something that we all have to deal with, and the longer you put off this decision to go back to school, the more expensive these uh, courses will be by that time. There are, uh, I do want to be very clear about this, because this is also something that I know discourages people, especially um, older adults who are considering going back to just think they don't have the money. There are financial aid programs out there, especially if you never went to college at all. Um, don't think that that money that you can get uh, through financial aid, um, you know, somehow expired. You know, you're still uh, entitled to it uh, or entitled to apply for it. I'll put it that way. There are a lot of financial aid programs available to help you out. Most of them are in the form of loans, and while that's not always, uh, you know, the ideal situation, of course, uh, because you will have to pay that back with interest, um, it at least allows um, you to be able to take a lot of the cost off. Um, my advice would be to is to look into financial aid. Uh, there are scholarships available. I would also look into that, um, and also uh, you know, work study programs, um, and also uh, community colleges will help uh, um, knock down a lot of the cost, and I'll get to that in a little bit later. Don't let the cost deter you as far as going back to school. Um, you can factor in costs as far as where you go to school to a certain extent. Um, certainly some schools are much more expensive than other schools. But if you're considering go back, 
going back to school and you're not sure whether or not you can afford it, don't let the cost be the thing that tells you no because there are um, payment plans. Uh, a lot of schools will have some kind of payment plan where you can pay a percentage of your semester's bill um, you know throughout you know each month you know you pay 25 percent of the total bill so um, there are definitely ways to help um, to be able to afford go back to go back to school um, that aren't all to do with loans don't knock community colleges they do a great thing um, and definitely consider them for your first two years of school um, not only will it help reintroduce you to being a student again in a really supportive environment but it also helped uh, cut the cost down for you as well. Okay, so the next thing I have to consider is online versus in person. And that, quite frankly, is just something that you have to, you, you probably know already. I know personally, um, at least for my undergraduate, um, I, I needed to go to class in person because I needed, I needed that face-to-face -face interaction to learn I also wasn't disciplined enough to be a completely independent student. I needed to know that I had to be someplace twice a week to have assignments to submit, to take exams and write papers for, and receive that feedback in person, and also to, to interact with the other students because you will definitely find that whether, regardless of whether you're a traditional age student or you're an adult student, um, you know, having a doing things in teams is a great thing because chances are what you don't understand, your friend understands, and vice versa, and you can help them out as well. So, um, but that's all uh, dependent on what type of person you are. You might already feel very independent and a, a very much a self starter, in which case, a online program might be for you. My uh, advice would be is to scope out the the programs, um, a lot of big universities have online programs and online classes um, that also, just to give you a fair warning for, do have um, certain time commitments. So while you might be able to do things on your own time, more so than, you know, attending in person, um, you will still have to sacrifice time. So just uh, going back to the time thing, definitely make sure that you have time to go to class, to do the assignments online versus in person, check it out yourself. Make sure that wherever you do take a class or um, are enrolled, that you're enrolled in some sort of accredited college. Remedial work I have written down, keep in mind of where your, um, what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And if your weaknesses certainly are in math, science, or writing, um, then definitely don't hesitate on doing some remedial work at a community college because those things are crucial to your success in a four-year program. Mental preparedness I wrote down and what I mean by that is especially if you've been out of school for a long time and you've gotten used to living life on your own time and the only commitments you have are to your family and to work. It's a um, it's a big mind shift sometimes to go back to school when you're in a classroom and you're behind a desk and there's a teacher and you have to go to the store and get notebooks and pens and pencils and a calculator and a school bag. So. Um, Along with all that is just this mental preparedness that regardless of your age, you are now a student and you have to do the things that students do. Canceling your Friday plans or probably uh, more accurate is canceling all your weekend plans because you're going to be doing homework or studying. Before you make the commitment to go back to school, before you put money into it, make sure that you are mentally prepared to be a student again. Uh, the last thing I have written um, is family support and spousal support. There are two components to that really. The first component is um, financial in a way. 
because to some degree, depending on what you do, you might either have to work less or stop working completely depending on what you're doing, or you might not have to at all. But even if you don't stop working at all, if you're still working 40 hours a week or more, financially, a lot of your money will be going to school. And not just the tuition, there are, you can expect to spend anywhere between, depending on how many classes you take, um, 100 to 500 hours in books per semester, sometimes more. Um, travel costs, depending on how close you live to class. Lab fees if you take science classes. Um, activity fees if your if your class goes on trips anywhere, uh, which does does happen even in college, and they're fun. Um, so those are going to be things to consider. Along with your own mental preparedness, you need to prepare the people that you live with, that you're also going back to school, so that they can be supportive. You're not going to be able to do the things that you used to do. And that is going to be a transition. Um, you aren't always going to be able to stop to pick up milk. You aren't always going to be able to pick up the kids. You aren't always going to be able to spend time with anybody at times. College is tough as it is. It's even harder if you've been away from school for a while and you have a family and other things going on. So when you get a bad grade, or you are drowning in overdue coursework and you have a 15 page paper to write um, and you're trying to study for an exam at the same time and you also have your normal everyday life things going on those people around you are going to be um, invaluable to your college success all these factors that I talked about time, money, selecting a school uh, type of program, online versus in person, doing some remedial work, mental preparedness, family and spousal support. All those things are to, uh, in my opinion, the most uh, fundamental and most important uh, factors to consider if you are an adult, non-traditional student who's thinking about going back to school. By all means, this is just my take on it all. Um, Feel free to comment on this video and let me know your thoughts. Um, if you have any questions, I will try to answer them for you. And good luck. And don't let anybody or anything stop you. Take care.